You know, it's not often that uh, I get a product in for review that's like really good, that innovates this space, that's not just a cookie cutter version of something else that's already out. We just saw it with the Lian Li Lan Cool 2. A ground up design and a really good case, all metal, tempered glass, very modular. You're able to move things around to suit yourself. Yeah, there's a little RGB in there, but the main focus is its build quality. If you haven't checked out that video, I check out, you know, go check it out. It's a really good case. But uh, then I sit down to do another product review, this Arctic Liquid Freezer 2, and uh, wasn't expecting it to be any, well, near as good as it is. It's, it's amazing, it's really good. It innovates the space, it does, it does something different, and it's probably the best performing AIO out there, at least according to my testing. So, uh, strap in your seats, we've got another amazing product here that just isn't some cookie cutter, you know, like, I mean, look at this pump here, it looks like a Transformers cod piece, looks like Optimus Prime's jock strap, or I don't know. It's, it's kind of ugly, but I also kind of dig it. And yeah, there's a little fan in there. <laughs> That's a fan. We're going to check that out. We're going to check out the performance on this thing. And it grew from the ground up AIO liquid cooler from Arctic. And it's really, really good. And I'm excited to tell you about it. So do an intro or something. And then we're going to talk about it. Oh, yeah. All right done screwing around here. Yes, this is a AIO cooler review and I'm excited to tell you all about it because it's really good. It's, re it's like, might be the best out there. We need a little bit more testing, but I'm very impressed with this. And I've done some testing, okay? If you're a fan of the channel, you know I've recently did a video where I compared what I consider to be the two best AIO liquid coolers out there. The Kraken X72, which by proxy, it, it, like there's some cooler master or there's some anyway some other ace attack uh you know coolers out there that are very similar with that generation of pump and block and stuff like that evga makes one corsair makes one so you know there's a couple of coolers that fall into that little area ace attack being a company that made all liquid coolers for a while because they have a patent on pump on block design and it made everyone really afraid to do something different but that's really changed a lot. And I don't know what happened, but in the last couple of years, we see a lot more, you know, custom design AIO liquid coolers like the Deep Cool Castle 360EX that I compared that Kraken to. It's a, you know, completely new design from, well, it's a, it, like a, you know, a, a custom design from Deep Cool that uh, doesn't use the Acetec stuff. And when you compared those two, we well, saw that at, uh, you know, five gigahertz on a 9900K, very similar performance there, okay? And then I was bringing this in here and I was like, oh, I'm gonna go test it on the same, you know, settings and everything at five gigahertz and we'll see how it performs forms and uh, when you compare the results I got with this with the results I did in that previous cooler shootout video this thing's right there in the middle it's right up there at the top it's doing very well we see a max temperature in a 20 minute Ida 64 stress test reaching 80 degrees on the castle uh, we have 79 degrees on the Arctic here and 78 on the Kraken X72 with an average of 72 degrees on all of the coolers showing that 5 gigahertz just isn't warm enough to let these guys stretch their legs so uh, you know, th that, that's, that's good. It's good to know that they're pretty much within variance there. So I thought, well, I have to test this thing until, you know, I, I reach its limit. So I loaded up uh, 5.2 gigahertz on my 9900K and I installed this thing in there in the case. So it, there's some airflow happening from the case. So just to get this out of the way, first off, this little thing here, actually back in 2017, the Arctic liquid freezer one was the first AIO liquid cooler I got in for review from Arctic from, from anybody. That was the first AIO I, I reviewed and I reviewed it fairly positively. And it's like Arctic likes to send their stuff to like lower subscriber count YouTubers and, and stuff. So I haven't really seen a proper review from like a big YouTuber from this. So I'm glad to be one of the first doing it, but uh, there were some positive reviews on this thing from some other, you know, lower uh, subs to YouTubers and stuff like that. So, uh, you know, I was like, wasn't expecting a lot, but you know, there was some promise with it, but uh, they actually, when I reviewed their original liquid freezer, sent me the design for this one, because they were in, it was in development all the way back in 2017 when I had like, 
8,000 subscribers. And as you see from these renders, it hasn't changed a whole lot. And in my emails with them, I asked them, well, what is that little fan there? And they're, I'm like, is that a, the, the impeller for the pump or is that a flow indicator? Because I've seen that before on an AIO cooler from Enermax. No, it's, it's a fan for the chipset, he says. I think he means VRM, but uh, I told him, don't put that on there. You'll get made fun of, but they still did it anyways. They virtually didn't change the design at all, except for it has no RGB. When it looked like in the original renders, there would be some lights on this thing. Go to hand with them. No RGB. That's awesome. Matte black. That's awesome. It looks really good. There's no lights on it or any weird frills just to kind of make it fancy. It speaks for itself, which is cool. But back to my little story there, that little fan, it does nothing to cool the VRM, especially in a case that already has airflow. You know, uh, both the cases I tested in here today had a fan at the back you know, exhausting and there was more air being generated by that 120 or 140 mil fan than this little like peanut of a fan could ever do. And, uh, you know, unless you're going to make this thing sound like crazy, it doesn't seem to spin up loud enough to hear. So it's just kind of a gimmick, but it's really the only gimmick about this thing. So for, out of the way, this little fan does nothing. But the cooler itself performs very, very well. So I hooked it up into my 9900K test system and I put it up to 5.2 gigahertz, which is the max my chip will go at 1.405 volts. And at that particular instance, you see that it ends up coming out on top with a max temperature of 96 versus the NZXT's 97, and the average temperature goes down two degrees. So when we really give these things the beans with a really hot CPU, this thing looked like it was winning. Well, that's really all I can do with uh, you know that 9900K, but I do have a 12 core system that we could do some testing on. So I have my everyday system over here. It's a Ryzen 3900X with four more cores and a little bit more heat to generate. Uh, and uh, so I checked out this thing on that. And I started out at 4.1 gigahertz, which is kind of the all core overclock on the 3900X anyways, but I wanted to make sure it was exact instead of running it at stock. And uh, we see there that they pretty much perform equally. This versus the uh, Castle 360EX that I have installed on my main system here. And uh, they were within a degree of each other. So, you know, I knew I had to turn up the heat a little bit. And when I did that, I brought my system to 4.3 gigahertz at 1.35 volts really stepping things up and as soon as you get over that 4.1 4.2 barrier with rise and things started getting really warm and uh it, it it took the victory like by by a decent margin you see here it was at 82 degrees uh, uh max and 80 degrees average and i tested this twice and averaged out the numbers so it, you know, I made sure that this thing was working well. And then I tested the deep cool three times. I tested it with the original mount I had on it before I started the testing. And then tested it with a new mount because, you know, I had to remount the old cooler after I tested this one. And I wasn't getting very good results. So I went and mounted it again and I got similar results. So when you really give these three coolers the beans, it seems like the Arctic is the, the best performer out there. But I do want to do a proper test, 360 mil on all you know sides because this is a 280. This is what's for sale right now. They said they'd send me a 360 mil later, even though I don't think it's going to change much because look how thick this rat is. There's a lot of volume going on in here, and I don't think you know making this a little bit narrower but a little bit longer is going to add much to the cooling performance of it. Maybe just just a smidgen, but still, I'd like to do an apples to apples comparison, like maybe get. A couple of other coolers too from like uh, Cooler Mastered and uh, maybe Enermax or something like that. Just do like a 360, you know, all out, you know, hands down, who's the winner. But as far as the testing on this goes right now, it seems like at 82 degrees max at 4.3 gigahertz when there was a max of 93 degrees with the castle and uh, 86 average on the castle, and this is six degrees lower at 80 degrees, that it, it took the victory like by a large margin. Now, with the castle, I do want to test with another CPU at some point and kind of you know do more than just what I've done today because I think that because Ryzen's got an IO die and chiplets, 
that maybe the deep cool just isn't the best cooler for the Ryzen, or maybe if you rotated, like, because, you know, there'll be a fin design inside the pump, maybe it just does better uh, with Intel CPUs over Ryzen CPUs. So I'll do a proper test later, but this is looking very, very much like an innovative product that actually performs better than what I thought were the two liquid coolers, best liquid coolers out there, and it really surprised me. So the innovation doesn't stop there, too. There is more to this thing. Yeah, it's got that chipset fan I was complaining about, but, uh, you know, it looks a little bit weird, like a robot's junk. But uh, the uh, you'll notice there's no wires. Where are the wires from the fan? Huh? Where are they? Well, this is how it comes. Out of the box, this is what you get with one PWM, uh, you know, fan header that you plug on to your main CPU line and it powers the pump and the two fans all by its lonesome and it did a very good job doing so and then they tucked the wires for the fans inside of the sheathing here <laughs> uh yeah and it, it actually like you know really cleans up the look it kind of takes some of the guesswork out of putting these things together and then uh the fans are really good they run at 1700 rpm which is a little bit more uh, RPM than the castles, but it still uh, you know, was barely audible and delivered the performance. So really good fans on this thing. They come pre-installed and uh, honestly, this is the way, you know, if you're gonna get one of these, you're gonna mount it at the top of your case like this if you're using it out of the box. If you're gonna do a front intake design like this and have it run over to your CPU like this, you're gonna have to switch the pre-installed fans around, but I'm sure you could move the fans around. There is, you know, uh, it's not like they're stuck there. There is the wires there. They've just tucked them away in there so they're out of the way, which is really nice. And then, you know, this, uh, you know, nylon sheathing over the pump and or over the uh, hoses looks really, really good. The matte black looks really good. That little Arctic logo being silver looks really good. It's just a really nice design. It's all streamlined. And that's not even the gimmick that you'd sell it on. It's, it's, it actually just performs really good. So it blew me out of the water. It was really, really good. So if this was all super expensive, it wouldn't really matter, right? Like if this thing was $200, but this, this as it is, the 280 is $100, which if it performs as well as the 360s from the other, makes it like 20 and $40 cheaper than the other two alternatives I've been talking about today. So it's cheap as well as it performs really well. And it has this nice design that takes all the guesswork out of how to mount things and uh, you know uh, where the cables go and you know running cables in behind, just makes things really, really easy. And uh, I don't know what else to say. It's really good. There is a 240 mil version that's even a little bit cheaper. It's $80 and it probably performs similarly to this because it will still have that big thick rad on it. There's even a 120 uh, mil version of it. There's a 360 coming and I hope that they send me one so I can do a cooler shootout because I would like to revisit this at some point. But from the testing I've done uh, with really hot CPUs like the 9900K or the 3900X, it seems like this cooler is the best out there. Um, and I would like to test it again a little bit later just to make sure I'm not talking out of my butt here. But if you're looking for an AIO liquid cooler right now, I got Amazon affiliate links below. You have room for a 240 or 280 in your case. This thing is stellar. It's awesome. It really works well. Takes the guesswork on how to, you know, run your cables and stuff like that. It's matte black. There's no RGB, but you know, that's, not gonna be a big downfall for a lot of people. There's no RGB fans to worry about. There's no RGB on the block. They just went with form, or function over form with this, but in, in turn, they made it look really good and kind of uh, futuristic looking with the matte black, and it works really, really well. So I don't know what else to say. It's, it's a really good cooler. It performs really well. It seems like in the extreme overclock scenario, it does better than the Kraken or the Castle. It's even a little bit smaller than you know the ones you know as I tested it, and um, I got a hand it to you, like you did a really good job with this thing, even though it's got a silly little fan to cool your your chipset or your VRM. I'm not watching you on Instagram and Twitter. Thanks very much for watching this video. Definitely recommend it. There's links in the description if you're looking for an AIO liquid cooler. Maybe there's some sales happening, but at a hundred dollars for the uh, 280 and eighty dollars for the 240, you cannot go wrong choosing this cooler, and I'll give it a. Strong recommendation. I'll see you guys in another video. 
Good job, Arduk. You did, you done good. You done good, boy. Woo!